Welcome to another video from Dr. Locke. I've had these emulator boards in my um, pack for, you know, I don't know, about a year or, or more and I've never used them. They come with a little few instructions here, but I'm basically just going to give you the run through on what they actually do. So these little things here, uh, sometimes they're an extra, sometimes they come with, depending on how much you pay for your machine. But uh, they're from the Lonsdorf K518 ISC board. 518 Pro Key Programmer. Now what they do is they're for Toyota and Lexus vehicles. The black one here is uh, for 94 and 4D smart keys. The red one for 88 and A5. The blue one for A9 smart key and the green one is for 98. And the orange one? Well that's a good question. Orange one is for, did it say on the instructions? It didn't tell me which the orange one was for actually. Orange one I'm pretty sure is for H. H, the new one, because this came out and then that came out. Anyway, let's get basically down to it. So these ones here, you need to open them up the battery inside and it just so happens I have some batteries here that look like they've been to hell and back and it's a 2032 we're going to be putting in there now these particular things need to be binded to the to the programmer oh, there it is so there it is there let's cut out one of these batteries from the dirty packaging Got my battery here, a 2032 small little button battery whenever it wants to come out of its packaging. There we go, it's fighting a good fight. Okay, so positive up the top to the positive symbol, sliding it in. Okay, little lights. Let's have a little look at what the lights mean. Okay, blue is normal, red is hardware failure. So, so far, so far, so good. It will turn off automatically. When you activate it, it will actually uh, give you, I think, two minutes and then it'll automatically turn itself off. So, that's good to know. One, two, three. Hold down. Goes off. Push once comes back on. So we've got uh, all the different models there plus the new one. Now I'm going to go through and try and bind them. I've never done this before. So after a year or two of um, using the Lons door, I'm still very happy with it. There's another video or two I'm going to do afterwards about some of the new features and downloads that they've uh, put on it. So those ones are really handy. I used it the other day for chip generating things like that but that'll be another video. Sorry about the mess on the bench every locksmith's bench has to have some sort of degree of mess it's just the way it is okay so i've never binded these before so we'll go through and see how easy it is uh yeah so basically toyota and lexus smart key um, is what they're for and the reason you want these is because when you can't turn on the ignition and you can't program in that first key you can't program in your other keys so this is kind of a cheat to get the first key programmed in so that then you can program the other ones in after that and uh, they've got all the makes and models there uh, red blue and you've got to install a battery what else did they tell us about this okay uh, back up the EEPROM data from to your computer email so basically for some of the Toyotas, he will actually ask you to uh, plug in with your Lons door, do a backup of the data that you can suck from the vehicle with your Lons door, and then from there you can use the you can use the emulator. So backup data from the onboard, uh, make an emergency emulator key with the backup emo data. Uh, this key can be used as an original key, and turn the ignition on. Uh, so you can add more smart keys. Add smart key. Uh, yeah. You can also delete, delete smart key. Okay, so let's go to the binding functions. Go to binding emulator key. So where will we find that? Generate adapters, special functions, simulate chip, bind simulated chip. Now when you do bind it, um, the problem is that once you bind it to one machine you can't like give it to a friend and then they use it it'll be 
bound to your machine. So let's uh, just turn that on. Mine emulated a chip. Please place the emulated chip into the f slot. So we've placed, placed it there. Failed to obtain data. Please make sure the emulator. Okay. There's Toyota. Hope I haven't gone past it. Toyota. Okay, select from vehicle, select from type. Uh, all smart key lost, immobilizer, remote. All smart key lost, let's try that one. All smart keys lost. Okay, here we are here, bind, um, bind in a SKE. So let's do that one. So we've got it on, the blue light's on. You only need to do this once. You can't really transfer your your um, your little emulator to the friend or anything because they're actually bound to your machine. Emulate into the slot. Uh, search binding is a must when using. Okay, so you got you have to bind it. Put the key in the slot and push OK. Keep binding success. This key is available. Okay, so it's available now. That's our 128 bit H. Let's put this one in. Bind this adapter too. I mean, there's no point getting out there if all your if all your things aren't bound. Put the key in. The lights on. Right key fail. Okay, why are we getting that? Let's try one more time. Okay, so we've got a fail on that one. Maybe we're not using the right setting. Okay. And we failed again on that one. Not having much luck here. Let's turn that one off just in case. This one's on bind okay okay binding success there it's good okay let's see if we can bind the next one Okay, we've got another fail on that one too. Leaving the black one. So far we've got two out of five. Bind. Okay. Okay. Failed. Okay, so we've got two out of five so far binding. So, uh, let's see what we can do now. Let's put a Put this back in there. See if it's actually going to work without binding. We can generate. Okay. Okay. Fail. Okay. So no, we will need to. We will need to bind it. Okay. So after a lot of binding problems, I think I've found a way. So we go to bind adapter, push OK, put the circuit board over the top, hold the button down, push OK. Turn it on, OK. And we are successful. So what I was originally doing is putting it down like this and I wasn't getting much action there so then I've put it over the top of it like this and I seem to have been getting a little bit better and I was also turning it on and off and com continuing to rebind rebind so to get all five emulators going it basically took me about 15 minutes um, some one or two went in straight easy the rest of them were backwards forwards backwards forwards but I was just yeah basically just uh, taking the battery out and then going to bind and then getting ready, okay, put it in the slot and push OK, slide it in, push it there, and it read it and worked that time. Okay, so that's these uh, emulators. 
Now the hardest thing is going to be working out which one came from which cover because I've pulled them all out and that's just going to be a nightmare. So I don't know if I uh, can read it or what I've got to do to find out which cover I pulled. <laughs> did. Well, would have been better off doing one at a time but too late now, should have, could have, but didn't. Anyway, that's binding the emulators. So a few little things to notice, um, you might have to have Wi-Fi when you're doing um, these Toyotas and Lexus ones. These are just a cheat basically to get the first key going so then you can program the other keys. Uh, you first of all plug in with OBD, download the data, do a backup and then you can start to generate one of these and then get the car starting so or on accessories so you can do some programming for the smart keys. Once again the black is for the 94 4D, red is for the 88 or A8. The blue is for uh, A8 and sorry A9, and the green is for the um, 98, and the orange is for the 128. And once you bind it to the device, you can't lend your your um, emulators out, so they're bound in. And then after that, it should be happy days and happy happy EEPROM program or happy programming without needing to remove the EEPROM for Toyota Lexus smart keys. Okay, thanks for watching.